Tanisha, as you hosted a private dinner last night to celebrate Fine Gael's decade in power, the ESRI was finalising their report on energy poverty in this state as prices increase at the fastest rate in 40 years. Today's report found that the average household is now spending 2000 more on fuel and energy, and this could increase by another 1500 Prices are through the roof, Tanisha, and people are struggling. One in three households are now living in energy poverty. And this could rise to a staggering 43%, as the ESRI said this morning. And I quote, as fuel bills go up, it is the people and families on lower incomes that suffer the most. They went on to say, in rapidly increasing numbers, households are facing the choice between putting food on the table, buying back to school clothes, or heating their home. Today's report, Tonish, paints a picture that is undeniable. Households who are already at the edge are now being plunged into energy poverty. And this is the Ireland of today, with people, including working families, skipping meals or queuing for food parcels, something they never, ever thought they would have to do. And they're having to do this because the state is not supporting them, but letting them fall through the cracks. And those cracks are getting wider and wider. So whilst you toasted your own success in government last night, the reality is that many families out there are being pushed to the brinks. And let me tell you, this Tonish did, the last thing they're thinking about is raising a glass to Fine Gael's success, because what they're worried about is how they can get to the end of the week. What, how they're worried about is how they will pay the bills at the end of the month or put food in the ta on their table for their children. Facing these pressures, these families are confronted by a government who refuses to take further action now. Your government has repeatedly ruled out measures to support households until the, at October at the earliest, despite Sinn Féin calling on you again and again, week after week, to do so. Now, Tanisha, let me tell you this, that is not sustainable. It is not acceptable for those tens of thousands of families who are pushed to the brink. You're allowing struggling households to wither on the vine, and your message to them amounts to buckle up because you're on your own. Government Cancordia has a moral duty to support those who are struggling and to protect the most vulnerable. But those who need it the most have been left behind. The, this government has refused to act. So, Tanishta, I put it to you, and again, I plead with you to change course and bring forward an emergency budget with the measures that Sinn Féin have proposed, including cost of living cash payments to lower and middle income households and a social welfare package that protects the most vulnerable from the cost of living crisis. So, Tanishta, will you change course? Will the penny finally drop? Will you wake up? Will you take action? Will you understand that people can't wait a further four months for you to bring forward a budget and then whatever time after for you to implement such a budget? So, uh, Deputy, just first of all, I think, think that was a cheap shot. Um, I hosted a dinner last night to thank colleagues for their years of service and there was no public money involved. Um, you host dinners in America, you charge people a thousand dollars a plate to attend and your party leader flies first class to get there. That's what you do in the middle of a, of a cost of living crisis. And I believe she's about to announce another first class trip to Australia, uh, which we should be undertaking uh, in the next, um, the next uh, um, uh, couple of weeks, where she'll be um, clinking champagne glasses with uh, the Trinity alumni in uh, Australia and uh, meeting the Australian Business Association. So that's a cheap shot, particularly coming from a hypocritical party like yours, a party that receives millions of donations from vagabonds uh, who live in a caravan, a party that please, is please. one of the biggest landlords in the state that Tarnished owns 50 properties, without interruption, please. Uh, and, a, and a person who operates his constituency please. office using public money from some sort of Republican company. So cheap shots, particularly coming from you, um, should be seen as what they are from the Irish people. But to deal with the issue, to deal with the issue, and I do, do, do deal want to deal with the issue, having responded to the cheap shot, Ken Corla, um, the report, the report that we saw, the report that we saw from uh, the SRI today uh, is stark. Um, I don't think it is surprising to anyone in this house. Uh, we all know the extent to which petrol and diesel prices have soared in the past year. Uh, you only have to fill, it, fill your tank or go into the forecourt to see that. Uh, we all know the extent to which the cost of electricity and gas has gone up. You only have to look at your, util your utility bill to know that. Um, people are feeling the squeeze, uh, and some families are really struggling, uh, having to make very difficult decisions about what they spend their money on uh, because of the increase in the cost of living. 
these are largely driven by international factors, uh, the mismatch between global supply and demand, uh, in particular Putin's war in Ukraine. And if you go to Northern Ireland or to Britain or to France or to Spain or to Germany, you'll see they're experiencing uh, all of the same problems as we are, because this is an international problem. Um, but government can help, uh, and we are helping. In January, for example, uh, we introduced a billion euros worth of budget measures, an increase in the minimum wage, increases in welfare, increases in pension, reductions in income tax for middle income earners, uh, something you opposed. Uh, the average uh, couple, both on the average income today, would be paying 800 euros more in income tax this year if you were finance minister, and that's a fact. Uh, and since then, we've introduced another 1.4 billion uh, in additional measures. We've taken 20 cents off the cost of petrol, 15 cents off the cost of diesel. We're now down as low as you're allowed to go on, on European law uh, when it comes to taxes on diesel. We can't go any lower. And I have confirmation of that um, in relation to diesel from the Minister of Finance today. We've reduced VAT on electricity and gas to 9%, which is the lowest it's ever been. We've taken 200 euros off people's electricity bills. And we've had a targeted measure of giving people a fuel allowance an additional 100 euros. So that's what's been done so far. Uh, yes, we are, we are working on, for, on further action. We accept that we need to take further action to help people with the cost of living. Uh, the budget is three and a bit months away. We're working towards that, looking at the different options, seeing what we might be able to introduce more quickly rather than waiting until January, February, or March, seeing what we can do uh, in October, um, in November, in December to help people before Christmas in relation to the cost of living. Uh, and I don't rule out um, additional measures uh, between now and then. Um, we will continue to monitor the situation. We will see if prices moderate or continue to rise, uh, and I'm not ruling out uh, interim measures. Um, but as things stand, uh, we have none planned, and we're working towards uh, a budget package um, in a few months' time uh, that will be in place for the winter uh, and help people with these rising costs. Deputy. Well, I think your, your opening gambit uh, just again explains how out of touch your government is, and I really thought somebody who who, in which the DPP is currently assessing whether they'll prosecute you under the Corruption Act, maybe you would be a bit more humble in relation to your response. But let me put it to the, let, let me, let me put it, let me put it to you this. This report isn't just expectable. We knew it was going to happen because you have failed to act in relation to protecting those most vulnerable. But this report is a report of shame. One in three households are in energy poverty. You're not a commentator. You're the Thonishti. You're the leader of a party in government. We need action now. There is four weeks left of this sitting in the doll. There are people who are going to St Vincent de Paul. There are people who are queuing up for food parcels today. There are people who are sitting at home wondering how they're going to meet their bills next week. They need government action right here, right now. You say you will assess how prices will work out in the medium term. Open your eyes. We know that it's only going in one direction. The SRI points that out to us. Energy prices will continue to rise in the autumn. And even if they don't, people are struggling in the here and now. They need action from government. So for the first time, because it is contrary to what the Taoiseach has said and the Minister for Finance, is the Minister for Finance on board with the idea of bringing new measures? And when will a government be, make a decision on such a Thank case? Thank you very much, Tarnished. Deputy, I, th I think that was another cheap shot and a, very, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and a very personal shot. And it says a lot about you, it says a lot about you um, and the nature and the character of the kind of person you are. And it's particularly strange coming from you because you were prosecuted. You abused, mistreated a Garda Shiakana. For that, you were prosecuted. You were found guilty. Uh, yes, you got away without a conviction uh, because of your age at the time. But you were actually prosecuted. You were arrested. That's what happened to you. And in your party, there are a huge number of convicted criminals uh, in your party and in your wider Republican family, uh, whether that is tax dodgers like Slab Murphy, a good Republican, according to Mary Lou MacDonald, a good Republican, a tax dodger, um, people who are convicted for uh, murder. Um, we know what your party's attitude is to rape and paedophiles and what you've done in relation to that. So your, 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 cheap shots, your, cheap shots, your cheap shots say a lot more about you than they do about me. Well, the courts will decide, and they decided on you. They decided on you. You were prosecuted. You were taken to court. Don't. Deputy Catherine Murphy, a little bit of respect now for your colleagues. 